When you're a world leader, especially the leader of a global superpower, you're bound to get attention. Attention that isn't always positive. In fact, sometimes the attention is so negative that people try to take your life. Gerald Ford is one such president. A president who had two people almost take his life only 17 days apart from each other, both in California. Both of these attempts are fascinating on their own, so I decided to split this subject into two parts, one for each assassination attempt. So without further ado, let's start with our first assassin. Lynette Fromm was born on October 22, 1948 in Santa Monica, California. As a child, she performed in a dance group called the Westchester Lariats, a group that toured all over the United States and Europe in the late 1950s, even performing at the White House. In 1963, the Fromms moved to Redondo, 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 Redondo Beach, where she started using drugs and alcohol while in high school. Somehow, she still graduated. She moved out of her parents' home and went to El Camino College for about two months before she had an argument with her father and she became homeless. So now there's a homeless young woman with a history of drug and alcohol abuse in the streets of California during the 60s. I wonder what'll ha- oh yeah, right. <laughs> I fall in love with him. Excuse me, I fall in love with him continuously, but he's, um, he's very brilliant. Charles Manson just got out of the federal prison at Terminal Island after his second arrest for, hmm, and was riding on a bus to Venice Beach. As he exited the bus, he noticed Lynette Fromm sitting on a curb. This is the first time they've met. Manson asked her, Your parents threw you out, didn't they? Lynette immediately believed Manson was a psychic. How else would he know? I don't know exactly how their conversation went after that, but as Manson was about to leave, he said, I can't make up your mind for you. And that's all she needed to hear. She picked up her things and followed him, becoming one of the first members of the Manson family. Fromm followed the Manson family everywhere even to Spawn Ranch, where the family lived for a while. If Spawn Ranch sounds familiar, it's because it was included in the film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The movie even included Lynette. It's this lady. Because me and George like to watch TV on Sunday night, FBI and Bonanza, but George finds it hard to keep awake that late, so I make him take a nap around now so I don't get chipped out of my George TV time. Charming. George Spawn, the owner of the ranch, called her squeaky because of the noise she would make when he touched her. Mm. Let's move on. After the Sharon Tate murders, Manson and a few of his followers were arrested. The rest, including Fromm, protested the arrest. Fromm also got arrested twice, but only for attempting to stop people from testifying in Manson's trial and for contempt of court since she refused to testify herself. While Manson was in prison, she and a few others started working on a 600-page book about the Manson family with drawings and pictures. She even attempted to get it published, but decided not to because it would be too incriminating. The book was eventually published in 2018. It's called Reflexion. Fromm was later involved in the murder of James and Lauren Willett in Stockton, California. The murder of the Willett can honestly be a video on its own. After the whole debacle in Stockton, Fromm, along with Sandra Good, moved into Sacramento. In devotion to Manson's new religion, Lynette and Sandra often wore robes and changed their name. Lynette wished to be called Red, and Good wished to be called Blue. I guess I should be glad they kept it simple. Then I heard after that that Ford was coming and I thought, oh, I'll go and, I'll go and talk to him. And then I thought, he's not going to talk to me. He's not going to talk to you. I thought, well, maybe I'll bring a gun. And then I, th I said to myself, are you going to shoot him? And I said, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go see what's necessary. Lynette Fromm, sorry, Red, 
was getting concerned about the redwood forest, a forest containing some of the largest trees in the world. She believed that the trees were in danger, and she wanted someone to help her do something about it. First, she went to a general who said that they couldn't do anything about it. Red was unsatisfied and decided to take her demands directly to the president, Gerald Ford. She heard he would be in the city soon and decided this would be the perfect time to talk to him. She doubted that he would listen to her though, understandable. So she thought bringing a Colt M1911 .45 caliber semi-automatic pistol would get his attention and get him to listen to her. On September 5th, 1975, without any real plan, Red, in her red robe, and only four bullets in her gun's magazine, went to Capitol Park in Sacramento. She pointed the gun at the president and was immediately restrained by Secret Service agents. The gun never even went off. Something that Red definitely wanted people to know, seeing as she kept yelling that as she was being restrained. Not only did the gun never go off, but there wasn't even a bullet in the chamber. She claimed that she ejected the bullet before leaving home, and investigators found that bullet on the floor of her bathroom. Red was promptly put on trial after this event. From a very uh, simplistic point, I did get his attention and did a long time for it. Lynette was in prison for 34 years before being released on parole. Her prison time was mostly quiet. Oh yeah, except for that one time she attacked an inmate with a hammer. Oh yeah, and that time she escaped for two days before getting captured and getting her sentence extended. She was released on parole on August 14th, 2009. She moved to Marcy, New York with her boyfriend Robert Valdner. The two still live there to this day. A lot of Lynette's life seems to be influenced by her involvement with the Manson family, an involvement she doesn't seem to regret. Lynette and Sandra, sorry, Red and Blue, are the only Manson family members who haven't denounced Charles Manson. Honestly, I don't know what you should take away from this story. I guess, don't do drugs, kids? Anyway, I know Gerald Ford learned some things. The Secret Service probably did too because there weren't any more attempts on Gerald Ford's life after that chaotic day. For about three weeks. <laughs>